So next up, we're going to talk about grids within Recordbox. Now, when you dropped your tracks into Recordbox, it went through and it analyzed them for things like BPM, for key, for structure, but it also applied a beat grid to them. Now, the beat grid is there to track the beats within your track, and that's essential when you want to use some of the more advanced features of the Pioneer players, such as syncing. So by having this beat grid on every track, a Pioneer player can then keep two tracks in time. Now, the results of how Recordbox analyzed analyzes your track for the beat grid can vary quite a bit from track to track. So sometimes we need to get in there and manually edit it. And that's what we can do from the grid tab within Recordbox. Now there's a whole load of controls within this panel and I'm going to talk you through each one in turn. Now the first button here, this sets the first beat of the bar. Now depending on how it's analyzed your track, it might not detect the first beat as being the first beat. It might detect the snare as being the first beat, in which case it might not be right. In which case you can actually set the first beat by using this button. I'll show you how to do all of these different things in a minute. Next up, we have the BPM. This is what it's detected the track as, and we can also tap out the BPM as well. So once the track is playing, we can tap this in time to the beat to work out the BPM. Next up, we have a couple of buttons here for shifting the beat grid left and right. Now, if Recordbox has analyzed this track correctly with the right BPM, but the grid isn't quite aligned with the beats, then you can use this to shift it left and right to get it in the right place. Next up, we have a couple of buttons here that expand the beat intervals and shrink the beat intervals. So effectively, they increase the BPM and decrease the BPM, or at least the grid anyway. You hopefully shouldn't need to use these, but they are there if you do need to manually tweak it. Next up, we have a couple of controls here for doubling the BPM value and halving it. Now, this is really useful if Recordbox has gone through and analyzed your track wrong for the BPM. Maybe it has doubled it or halved it. So you might have a drum and bass track that is 170 BPM and it's incorrectly analyzed it as 85 BPM. We could easily just double it there using this button or vice versa, you can halve it. Now, when Recordbox analyzes a track, it assumes that the tempo is going to keep the same throughout the track. However, if you have a track that doesn't do that, and maybe it changes tempo throughout, then this is when these buttons are going to come into play. And I'll get into them a little bit later. Next up, we have an undo button and a redo button. Hopefully that's quite self-explanatory. If you make any changes within here, you can undo it or redo it. And finally, we have the metronome settings. The metronome allows us to hear whether the beat is in time or out of time with the grid. And we can turn the metronome on and off here and adjust the volume here. So let's hear how this beat grid sounds with this track and we'll turn the metronome on. If it's already off, so it might be gray, then just turn it on and it will go blue. And as you can hear there, the metronome allows us to hear whether the track is in time with the beat grid. And with this one, it seems to have done a great job. So let's load a different track in here. Now, almost straight away, we can see that these are beats within here and the beat grid isn't in time. So let's play it back and hear how it sounds. So it's not in time at all. So this is where we're going to use this first button here. We're going to place the first beat of the bar on that first kick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag the waveform and just move the playhead to the very start of that kick. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this button and it will then move the grid all in time. And we can play that back. So we can see here that the red line indicates the first beat of the bar, and then we have the two, the three, the four, and then the one again. And then we can skip through the rest of the track just to make sure that everything is in time. So that has now fixed the grid, and don't worry, we don't need to save anything, it automatically saves it for us. Now, if you're liking this course and always wanted to make your own DJ edits, bootlegs and remixes for your sets, then you might be interested in another course that I've done. I've got a complete beginner's guide to Ableton aimed at DJs wanting to make their own edits. I'll teach you Ableton from scratch and I'll teach you just the skills that you need to know when you need to know them so you're not overwhelmed by it all. I've had some amazing reviews from over 400 students that have already taken the course. Check out the link at the top of this video or in the description for more information.
So when it comes to adjusting the beat grid for a dance track like this, it's quite easy because we have a 4-4 kick in there. But what happens when we don't have a 4-4 kick or maybe no beats whatsoever? So let's try doing the same thing to an a cappella. Now we can hear there that it doesn't sound quite right. The beat grid really isn't in place. The metronome doesn't sound like it's going along with the acapella at all. And that BPM just doesn't seem right. 125.57 just seems a little bit weird. Usually it'd be a round figure. So we need to fix all of those bits. Now, when you're doing something like an acapella, when you're trying to find that beat grid on the acapella, you want to try and figure out what the repeating part is, or at least the start of the bar. Now, with this, we can hear this kind of repeated vocal going on, and that really helps us to be able to then nail down the speed of the record. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take that first part of the vocal here, and I'm going to put the very first beat on there. So I'll just line it up with my cursor, then hit that button. And we'll hear how that sounds. So that sounds a lot better. Let's hear how it sounds a bit later on. Need you 100 of your friends about. So it seems to have gone out a little bit. I think that's because the BPM is, well, it's not quite right. Let's try doing it as 125 BPM. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this once and it allows us to edit it. And I'm going to set this to 125 BPM and see if this sounds any better. Again, I'm going to put it at the very start here and play it back again. So we can hear there that it sounds just slightly out and I'm going to use these shift buttons here to shift the grid a little bit more in time. So if I shift it to the right, it will actually make it quicker. If I shift it to the left, it will make it slower. Need you 100 percent. Uh, I want to be the one you tell all your friends about. Baby, I'll be the one you just can't do without. You got to give me everything, baby, ain't no doubt. Give me 100. Need you 100%. I want to be the one you call every day and night. Ooh, are you going to be the one who's all so that now sounds a lot more in time. And just like you would mix a track in, I'm just moving that grid so that it actually feels like it's in time with the vocal. So I'm just kind of shifting it slightly to the left and slightly to the right just to make sure that it kind of fits in. It's just like when you're trying to mix two tracks together. OK, so let's try loading another track up. Now, this one is a transition track, so it starts off with house and then ends with hip hop. DJs use this to go between two different genres. And let's hear how Recordbox has analyzed this so far. So as I mentioned before, when you analyze a track with Recordbox, it does assume that the tempo stays the same throughout. But obviously with this transition track, it does not. So we need to go ahead and fix this. And to do this, we're actually going to put Recordbox in a different mode. So from this menu on the right hand side here, we can see that there's two different ways of analyzing a track. We have the normal method, which is basically the track stays the same tempo throughout. And then we have the dynamic mode. This is when the track might change in tempo. So let's try analyzing it with dynamic dynamic mode. So again, it's going to ask us for our analysis settings and I'm going to click OK. So it's going to go through in the background now and it's reanalyzing it. We'll see it kind of refresh itself in just a second. So we can see there that it has now refreshed itself. So let's hear it from the start and see how it's done. Godfather. 
So as you can hear there, it's actually correctly done the BPM for both tracks. So we have the house part playing here. And right here is where the transition happens. So it goes between the two BPM. So it starts off at about 124 BPM and goes down to around about 103 BPM. So whilst the beat grid isn't quite in time here because it's actually at the moment it's going between the two BPMs, as soon as it gets to a solid BPM the other side, it actually is perfectly in sync. So if you do have a track that does change tempo throughout, maybe it's another transition track or it's a live track, or maybe it just has a breakdown where it goes to a different BPM, then you can use that different setting to analyze the track with. Now, Pioneer have made this record box software to try and be as good as it can be automatically, but quite occasionally you will have to edit the beat grid for certain tracks. And of course, every track is different, so you're going to have different challenges with each one. So if you just go through and spend some time, you'll get better and better at beat gridding it when you come to do it. So that's just a few examples of how to adjust the beat grids on different types of track. But obviously every track is different and you might face different challenges with each one. So it's just a case of practicing with this beat grid and playing around with the different controls and the different buttons within here to get that grid just right. Sometimes it's just not possible. If you have a track that is done by a live group, for example, and the BPM is constantly changing, then sometimes it's just not possible to get that grid in time. However, if you have an electronically produced track, a pop track, a dance track or anything else like that, then hopefully the BPM will keep constant and you'll have no problem with the beat grid. You might just need to tweak it here and there, but generally there should only be a few controls that you need to change on it. <laughs> 